Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Pinstar Plays Against the Storm. So yes, we were successful in our previous uh, uh, battle against the Bronze Seal. But that's just the beginning. You thought that was the final boss? Absolutely not. While we can, there are bronze seals for us to reseal if we so choose, our next goal is the lead seal. Um, now we do get the permanent um, bonus from uh, um, having the si cycle duration increased by eight for having sealed the bronze. So there's no real reason to reseal the bronze unless it's just you're not going to be able to get to the next higher seal. The other thing that we're going to do also, I want to point out. We um, I did I, I spent some of our meta resources. I meant to record it. I apologize that I didn't. Uh, but we got rain punk engines. This is what I was holding off on veteran uh, for this. This is a lay. This allows a whole new and harder, well, you know, I wouldn't say harder. It's it's a new game fa uh, play facet that allows us to you know, push our buildings a little bit further, but with some consequences. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be getting into those and we're going to be dealing with the consequences of them. Um, and as such, we, as, you know, I'm going to start playing on veteran. We, I, I think we're pretty good. Like a, a every settlement level, or pioneer level settlement has won in a fairly comfortable victory. So it is time for us to grow in difficulty. Now, looking at our map here, there are two lead seals we can lunge for. We have this one up here, um, and then we have one down here. We also have one known um, brand new world modifier. It's a positive one. Um, and my inclination is to go for it. Um, you know, even though we don't get the royal resupplies from positive modifiers, there's still positive modifiers. And I mean, reading over this thing, you, one of your one of our uh, blueprint choices is replaced by a wild card, which basically lets us pick one of any blueprints. That's pretty nice. Not to mention, we've got another point of interest down here. Probably another one over here we can hit on our path down to the lead seal. So I think this is probably a pretty, you know, uh, good path. Not to mention, picking points of interest give you more meta resources. Because um, as you can see, we get bread, but then we get extra bread and we get machinery just from doing this, even though it's a positive. Um, now this is going to plop us into the marshlands again, and I know we've been here a lot, but that's okay. Uh, but let's bump that, di that difficulty up to veteran, and also let's remember to actually name our settlement this time. Um, again, going for our name in game patrons, uh, let's go for, uh, let's, um, we'll do, we'll do, uh, inverse thing. We did Zephyr of Forest last one, so let's do... Zenidar Marsh will be the name of this settlement. All right, we, so we've got just beavers, eight of them, or, wow, <laughs> boy, do I wanna only start with six people, including lizards, which are not actually my favorite, or do we wanna start with eight beavers and have a greater possibility of having harpies among those, and with an actual possibility of be having beaver harpy human. Um, I think we're gonna go with that. Now, again, four, Starting with fewer people, um, this this option does give us more stuff, but I do think I want the, the, the beavers regardless. Uh, conditions. So again, marshlands, standard uh, set of uh, thing. We get mushrooms from the trees. We can get leather from the trees and obviously wood. Um, the overgrown library is the special modifier. Gathering camps are more effective. I mean, huh. Lizards in the marshlands are actually a little bit better, but I still am very nervous about starting with only six villagers. Like that really kind of scares me. Now we could bump it to nine by starting with, well, villagers here. But no, I think we're gonna go with beavers for the time being. And if we get more lizards with that, then we get more lizards with that, that's fine. Um, 
Yeah, we're only getting one good thing and four bad things, so uh, I think that's a that's a thing of the of the difficulty here. Yeah, yeah. With with veteran, you get four negative effects, one positive effect. Um, a times two hostility multiplier. I think we had one point five times hostility uh, multiplier in our last one. So yeah, this is gonna be a little bit spicier. Um, success is not necessarily guaranteed. Still have the 14 uh, reputation goal here. Uh, but we do get lots more meta resources if we're successful. More fragments, we get a baseline machinery. Before we weren't getting machinery unless we hit special nodes. Now we get some baseline plus an extra 140 experience will let us level up and get more stuff in here. Um, yeah, this is tough. I just, if it weren't, if it weren't if like if if we had like eight if we had like eight lizards and a beaver or we had like five lizards and three beavers or something to make up the numbers i'd be more comfortable going with the lizards because again marshlands lizards they're a better combination but i think i'm going to just go with the beavers um i am going to go with more people i am going to go with wood um let me just remind myself. Uh, so there is there is stone to be had, but that's not a guarantee. I do like starting with stone, but maybe not. Let's let's start with some roots instead. We're we're kind of banking on the fact that we're going to roll into some stone because we also don't have anything to get into uh, uh, bricks. But I think I think that's good. I mean, we could start with fewer people. That might actually be better, question mark? No, you need the extra people in the early game. All right, let's, let's do it. Okay, our beneficial effect, gift from the woods. Um, gain five ever, every, oh, we've had this one before, it's good. Plus an additional for each hostility level. So we actually kind of want to reach hostility levels, but we also kind of don't. So here's our, so we have looming darkness. That's a given, that's global. Then we've got leakage. Um, cover the ancient heart has been damaged due to the exceptionally long strong. Heart's resistance has decreased by 200. So this is resistance to corruption, which actually is, might actually play into, into our thing right now. Um, we have this down here, this little percentage here. When we when we use rain punk, it causes um, blight rot. Uh, blight rot has to be purged, otherwise it will infest and take over our hearth. And if it does that, then it's game over. Uh, acid rain uh, recipes producing building materials yield fewer goods. Hmm. Okay, we need to be mindful of that one. And we may need to turn off our our building materials processes during the storm if we're up into this thing. And it's going to be harder for us to stay out of these levels of, of hostility because of the times two multiplier. Rotten rain. A blood flower will spawn somewhere in the... Oh my god. Now I've heard there are strats for farming these things these blood flowers um i am not cognizant of them so yeah and then lastly alluring lights uh villagers with effect uh have a five percent chance of perishing every 15 seconds oh geez um can be prevent by services times two so it, we have to provide not one but two different services to a villager to prevent this oh and by the way we have um beaver human harpy Favorite combo. Although maybe not on the marshlands. Oh, but we have early stone, so I'm happy. Now, one other thing that I've been pondering for marshlands, and, and this is a baseline effect of the marshlands, is the fact that um, Forbidden Glades have sort of like pr gigantic primordial resources in them. 
Um, these are, you know, you got the small nodes, you got the medium nodes, you got the large nodes, but then these things are mammoth nodes for something. And we, if we can tap into them, not only do they, you know, basically almost never run out, they also give us a, ch uh, give us a lot of side goods just for harvesting them. Now, yeah, there's our wild card. We have to pick our wild card like right off the bat. Man. That's a dangerous... We will... I mean, I'm going to do the same thing where we hold off on that until we see what we're doing. So I think... That's just regular dangerous. That's regular dangerous. I think the game plan here is to burrow... Because I want to try it. There's another Primordial. So we could burrow into this one and then burrow down here to get to this Forbidden one. Of course, going going this aggressively for, for Forbidden Glades this early might be problematic on its own, but I want to try it. All right, Woodcutter's Camps. Since we have so many people, we'll go for two of them right off the bat. Uh, let us get our pathways. Nice to see these two talking to each other. Get a nice crossroads going. All right, so let's see here. We got two harpies, one human, eight beavers, but we now know our, our racial composition here, so that makes me happy. All right, we do need a, um, let me see, a small trapper's camp for the eggs. Also, I've been, I've been told, I'm gonna experiment th with this, the building facing might be better to have it facing the thing it's harvesting rather than the road. So I'm gonna give that a try this time around. Stone cutter's camp to get the, well, stone. And yeah, we have the woodcutters. We do need our uh, workstation. We also need, we definitely need our um, trading post. We want to get that down ASAP. Um, yeah, we can put you up here. Actually, what I'll probably do is just do a double crossroads here. And then up here, we can do a crude workstation for our baseline materials. And then we are going to mark these trees down. Here. Well, actually, you know what? We're not going to mark any trees. We want them just to just to pick away at them for at first. We have plenty of beavers to do that. Also, um, Harpy, get in there. Yeah, with just a ton of beavers. Get our wood income going nice and high. <laughs> We're already at hostility level one, just from woodcutters alone. But it's it's the beginning of drizzle. No one's really suffering any effects of of that. Well, actually, no. People are suffering the uh, the hostility. Uh, so just for the hostility itself. Um, all right, let's take a look. Ooh. Useful mill upgrade. Gain three oil for every ten flour produced. That's that I that I might lunge because I know we we know we want flour. 
the question is going to be how do we um, what do we what's a good way to get flour because as far as well yeah getting getting flour produced because we know we, we this is the the case again of having triple biscuit so biscuits are going to be something I want to go for sooner rather than later uh, stone cutters camp we can do two more beavers is fine Um, and we get one of you. We'll leave one person on just construction duty. But yeah, I think we're I'm gonna we're gonna hold off on the milestone uh, selection until we get uh, get to our thing down here. Because if we see if we see um, fertile ground down here, then I'm pretty confident we can get. Um, something you know a farm of some sort all right orders let's see what we got here basic logistics easy enough amber trade gives us no nah, this one's just too easy plus uh faster on roads absolutely this is easy we can deliver it already uh i'm gonna wait until the queen's impatience go reaches a full level before i actually pop that uh, Harpy's Resolve or Camps uh, deliver 10 bricks. We've got stone cutters. We've got we don't have harvesters. Interesting. Um, well, I mean, we know we have stone cutters already. Harvesters. Do we actually start with harvesters? Let me just double check. Yeah, we do start with an actual harvesters. Plant fiber and reeds. Does the marshlands actually give us the possibility of, of gathering those? Um, no, actually. No plant fibers, no reeds. So we would never actually legitimately get that. We would just have to build the thing. So yeah, I think uh, Harpy's Resolve is probably the better pick here. Uh, cut through four glades or two glade events and three packs of building materials. Uh, Scouts packs, eh. Uh, jerky will be good for our Harpies. Parts are always welcome. Uh, I mean, we are kind of like gearing ourselves to um to get ourselves down here three packs of building materials can be done with the makeshift post without too much fuss um and i don't want to crack open too many glades so i think clearing glades is the better option here because we are going to go one and then hopefully two i'm i'm hoping the forbidden glade doesn't outright kill us but we'll we'll see where we go from there We are going to need to get houses going for, especially for harpies, sooner rather than later. Um, let me see. We start with 10 amber, building materials, plenty of food for the moment. Not much in the way of crafting resources. We are going to get a trickle of leather in, which means we can get a trickle of cloth in, which means we can get, eventually get some harpy houses down. Because um, I'm worried about them. Oh yeah, we have pie. We start with some pie. So the harpies and the humans will boost them. So actually, you know what? I am going to, I'm gonna do some, some uh, consumption restriction. Humans are not allowed to eat pie uh, for the moment. Because their, their, their base resolve is fine. I would rather save that for the harpies to keep them around. Uh, what other advanced foods do we have? Yeah, just the pies are the only one that's that's considered to be advanced. So yeah, we don't we do not want the humans eating the pies. Humans can eat raw materials. And speaking of raw materials, um, are there specific raw materials that I want to forbid? Not at the moment, but when we start getting into recipes, maybe.
it is so tempting to just dive into that, but I want to know what's in here. Because, yeah, that small press with the free oil when we make flour uh, with a racial trio that makes us want to make flour to begin with is really good. All right, got our trader building online. Um, our one builder is still doing their thing. Now you're... Unfair rash. Okay, so they're just upset the fact that we're not letting them eat the pies, but that's still not going to bother them. All right, so now we don't need any more builders. Uh, so we will have one in here. You work on some planks. Um, yeah, we do need cloth. We're going to need a bunch of leather for that, but that's fine. Bricks. Let's not make bricks yet, and let's not make pipes yet. Pipes are going to be a thing. Pipes are, are actually the thing. The, the, the reason I've been sort of ignoring and turning off pipes for so many times is that we, uh, we don't really need them until you get rain engines. But now we have rain engines. Well, yeah. Um, now, rain engines, there are only certain buildings you can install them in, usually production buildings. So you use pipes to build the rain engine, to connect the rain engine, and then you need to gather a certain type of water. Gathering a rain collector may also be another thing. Also, there can be now geysers that appear that produce a specific type of water. So now we have more buildings that ac can actually use the rain water that we have on, on here. All right, so I think we're good for now. I kind of, part of me wants to make a rain collector because if we can get down a like a rain mill uh, and then boost it with water, we can make copious amounts of flour uh, and then turn that flour into uh, in, in, well, get extra free oil out of that flour. Um, what I really do hope for, because I, I know this is the, the, the best way to get this is if we could get grain things. So we'd need the foragers camp, the, the higher, the larger one. Um, would be fantastic, uh, especially if our primordial ingredient down here would be a primordial grain. That would be even crazier. Um, now, part of me, uh, do I want to crack this open right now? I probably shouldn't. I probably should focus on getting houses and such. Yeah, we have we have some of those. We have yeah, we don't have any starting cloth. We may just want to get down some basic shelter. Four of these will give us some basic shelter. And actually that'll let us get our hearth uh, up a level. So even if we don't have the species specific bonuses going. Actually, we can get three of you down plus a, uh, a decoration. There we go. Um, because three of these will house up to eight people plus decorations, so we'll get our thing up here. I think what I'm gonna do, yeah, you're only got one person here. Um, we want all three of you on here. We will take one person off of stone cutting. Because having all this stone early will certainly let us get to be able to smash open caches more readily. All right, it's the next season. And yeah, we're, we're at a thin layer here. Yeah, they can, they can slowly hammer away at that. That should be fine. There's going to be a few people left out uh, in the lurch here. Are we at one? We are at one impatience. And that gives us an extra, we get, we get extra blueprints too. Not that we're going to access that right away. 
But the 10% faster along roads is actually a good thing. Yeah, you just keep churning away with some of these. I mean, we might get one, one of our blueprints might be a more efficient way of doing planks. The other thing I definitely want to get up, just because we hit, we know we need the packs of building materials. I mean, unless we get in our in our slurry of no, actually no, we we're not going to get a uh, um, make uh, a makeshift post. But I want the houses plus the de decor up first, so we're going to deprioritize you. And yeah, about a minute into the storm period is when I'll crack open this glade so that we have, we if, if we have to solve it and, and we have to take on some temporary bad mojo, we're not taking that on in the middle of the storm too. And plus this just clears out some extra area for us here. I don't want to spend too much time or money on um, sh generic shelters, but I think just to get the, the plus one upgrade for the ancient hearth is going to be worth it. I do also want to st uh, start a rain collector because I do want to actually get into that tech. And it doesn't actually start hurting you until you actually start spending the water. You can collect the water all you want, from my understanding. But yeah, Blight Post is how you fight those things. So yeah, we're not going to want to start using it until we have a way to deal with it. The Blight Rot cysts. Uh, and, and for that we need bricks, which, I mean, we have our stone. We can make bricks, but that's just... I prefer not to use that much stone for bricks. All right, so we have our, our we have a decent amount of resolve going here. We might be able to once the storm passes um, boost up the harpies because they're we only need them at a thirteen. Um, they're gonna they're gonna get plus two from once once we upgrade our hearth level here. Um, that's only puts them at one shy. We could um, favor them for like 30 seconds, but not during the storm because that's going to defavor the others and I don't want them to start leaving. But yeah, if we favor them for like 30 seconds, that should be able to clear our thing and get us more blueprints. Not that we're hurting for them, not that we've spent them, but you know what I mean. We're about to flip over to Storm anyway. Ah, I wish the, that would orient, well, no matter. We just need one more of those built and we'll be good. We're probably gonna unassign some um, woodworkers to get us back under the hostility level come the start of storm. So we are not punished too heavily for that. All right, now we can mark you for cracking open here. And is our yeah, we are encampment, so we got our we got our resolve boost. Now we just gotta cross our fingers and hope that whatever this dangerous glade thing. Ooh, ooh, that is fantastic! And yeah, um, so we just need to wait for yeah this to cook, 
and then we can crack it open. Uh, Bigger Barrels Ale production is really good, especially if we're going to be getting grain. Um, barrels, lots of leather, more people. Oh, baby. I mean, we have the option for a rest, but I think it would be very unwise to, to do that. Ooh, and Drizzle Water Geyser, and a Forager's... Hang on, Forager's Camp does what? Yes! For a, 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 a full-size Forager's Camp means that we can, we can get wild grain. Um, now, this one doesn't have wild grain. We actually need the uh, upgraded Trapper's Camp to get these eggs here. But that's okay. That is quite okay. Uh, what's in this cache? Uh, pickled goods, baskets, and pigments. Pigments we could probably turn into like trade goods or something. I am much better with that. Baskets of berries are probably fine too. But yeah, I'm very happy with this, this assortment here. What do we need to rebuild this? 10 wood? Uh, yeah. Now we don't have anything that this can actually crack open yet, so we don't need to rebuild this right away. But if we get lucky with our primordial roll, then we're we're in happy town. We just need to deal with this one first before we crack open um, this one. I think we're gonna crack open this one in the next rain season, the next storm season, rather. And we definitely now know we need to prioritize a trapper. Um, I think we're going to throw one person in here to start making, not the building materials, but uh, yeah, with eggs, because we're getting tons of eggs. Um, and yeah, you know what? We're going to just put a limit of three, just have you make one of that. Just so that we can start trading sooner rather than later. So I'm more and more convinced that we should get get with our with our wild card a rain mill specifically because of the small press. The rain mill is the most efficient, and I don't think we need the grain delivery line because we have the conditions. All we need to do is find some wild grain because we know we now can get it. Even if it's not the primordial grain, if we crack we if we find crack open a, enough things, we'll be good. Um, Porridge production is, I mean, porridge only is only good for humans. Small press, we're going to be making grain anyway. In fact, you know what? I'm going to take small press and we're going to take... the rain mill. And actually the rain mill gives us packs of building materials at a more efficient rate too. So, and it gives us scrolls, which we eventually can use for harpies and beavers. So the rain mill just kind of works all over the place here. We can't build it till because we don't have cloth yet, but we're getting there. We're going to pick the rain mill. And we're going to look at what our next camps are. All right, we don't need the foragers camp. Uh, kiln is really good. Carpenter is really good. Hmm. Yeah, Kiln's really good, but so is Carpenter. Actually, we go Carpenter for the for the better um, planks conversion. All right. Um, we know we need the Trapper's Camp. We absolutely need the Trapper's Camp. Now, the brewery, brewery been really good, but the Trapper's Camp, the upgraded one, is... I mean, that's going to make, we're, we're going to get good stuff from that immediately. All right, there's our brewery. I think brewery is going to be our next thing. Um, because we know we're going to be getting from the convicts the, um, the bigger barrels ale production bonus.
And we know we already have this. We also have a uh, copper vein for mine. Now here, so, so this is what we were talking about, um, getting the bigger nodes. So the large nodes have a 40% chance of leather, 20% chance of meat. The small nodes just have a 20% chance of more leather. So it's actually better for us to use the larger one to get the larger one like right off the bat. The only reason I'm not doing that is we just need a warehouse down here. So for the for just a moment we're doing this and also um, the gather the time to gather is shorter for the improved trappers camp. But yeah, I am very happy with this particular uh, upgrade path here. And also I'm really happy with the drizzle water. I think um, the uh, rain mill, no, rain mill uses clearance water, not drizzle. Unfortunate, that's okay. Oh, let's, uh, let's get a carpenter down. And let's get, um, you stop, oops, you stop making planks inefficiently. In fact, get out of there for a, for, for a moment and start building. I'm pretty sure we have enough planks, right? To build. Yeah, we just need the cloth. But I don't want you churning through more of our wood when we don't need to. Okay, so we get two people down here. And we start investigating. All right, more people. I will take the uh, the grain. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Survivor bonding safe haven for every hearth upgraded to neighborhood. Ooh, that's really good. Um, every neighboring town offers two more trade routes, but no trader will arrive. That's pot. You know, safe haven. Because we 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 want to upgrade to the higher levels here. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna move you down to here. Just have you just chip away at here, just so that we can make this an instant pierce next year. Um. Let's get a road flowing at least down to here um, again this this isn't useful at the moment just because there's no resources for it to tap into but that doesn't mean that I'm not really happy that it's there uh, yeah we can break you open with somebody And yeah, that minus seven shouldn't really do any, uh, cause any problems because this, this event will be solved before it goes off and before the next storm. And then we'll have everybody. Also, it counts as an, uh, an empathy event, which means we, uh, we might have some good stuff coming our way. When is our trader coming? We still only have two of six of the leather. Actually, you know what? I think we'll let you gather that one egg. And then we're gonna move you so that you can gather down here. I want you gathering the, the better egg nodes here. Also, we have a trade route ready. Yeah, we only have Smoldering City to our name here. Um, 10 roots for four amber. I think I will take that deal. If anything, it'll help us level up. And we get some extra amber to buy some new perks. 
Now these these actually give us better better returns too. Um, so let me move my stone cutters camp here, so that we're working on these better rocks over here. Yeah, we really want an extra. See, we still have two things here. Let's get one person on rebuilding this. Just so that we can move it. Ah, all far left. Um, do you have cloth for me? You don't have cloth for me. Do you have cloth making materials for me? You don't have cloth making materials for me. That is unfortunate. Um, we do have materials for, let's see here, every reputation, every full reputation lowers impatience. Oh, it just makes it lower even further. Um, yeah, I think, I think reinforced axes is the correct answer. As far as materials go, we have plenty of stones. So I don't need to buy brick. I really wish you had something that was cloth adjacent. We can buy more planks, but we don't need to. We'll just send you on your way. We might, we might quick call another trader once we get down here in case we need something. All right, if we have five more people, yeah, we have enough to actually get this upgraded, which actually is something we want sooner rather than later. So I'm gonna build the extra shelters. That will get those in there. And then we need the extra park and we need the garden. That will get you to a neighborhood and then that will trigger off our, our um, threat reduction. In addition to making people happier in general. All right, new orders. Um, we don't have a means for jerky here. Blight post and build purging fire. I mean, we are gonna get into that. That gives us more purging fire, creates a sea marrow. This is a really good one. Um, jerky production is pretty good, but we don't. We only have the harpies that want the jerky. We're not going. Although, hmm, I might sit on this, depending on like if we find a primordial cache of meat, then this would be really good. If only to one keep the harpies nice and full. Yeah, you know we're gonna hold off on that one because both sides could be useful depending on what our primordial is. It's just unfortunate. You don't even have leather, do you? Yeah, you don't have leather. Because I'd, I'd buy the, the raw materials needed. Oh yeah, you get out of there. You've made our packs of provisions. That's all we need at the moment. I mean, because, yeah, the only other thing you need is jerky. You're not selling jerky. All right, you're repairing that. That's good. You are repairing that. That is good. Well, you're resolving that. And then we're going to get five more people, too which is fantastic. And getting this hearth upgraded is, is great. Okay, now we can actually move this. We're just gonna put it off to the side for a moment. Um, let's get you down like this. Uh, what do we need for a small hearth? We need bricks. Um, I mean, we can plan it out. That's too close. That needs to be, all right, we gotta shave down these trees specifically, so. Get you down here. Just so we can make room.
Yeah, I really wish I could buy some cloth because then we could get our crude workstation up. And I don't think, I mean, hang on, is this? Yeah, this doesn't give us anything specific to um, cloth. And this isn't going to give us, actually, no, it's going to give us tons of leather, which gives us cloth. So that, that, that's not a long-term problem. All right, we have our uh, ancient hearth. Um, and yeah, we don't, we, we can't do the district yet. We haven't gotten that unlock yet, but that's okay. That, that one bonus, where is that? Encampment. Safe haven, there we go. Min so minus 40 threat for every hearth upgraded to neighborhood. So there's minus 40 right there. All right, so in our next episode, we will get some more of our stuff going here. In fact, let me get, so we just finished our, our thing here. We're gonna get, yeah, fabric and bricks are required. Um, so we'll get some production of that. Let's let's limit you to a four and to a four as well. We don't want to go too crazy with that. And we're also going to see what's in this Forbidden Glade and also see if we're going to die as a result of diving into a Forbidden Glade this early on. But I want that primordial resource. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that that's primordial wheat. Um, or primordial meat would be fantastic too. And then I'll fi figure out a way to make use of this Drizzle Geyser here too. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent, your feedback's always welcome. Till next time, pin star out. See ya!